skill sets from top educators, top batches starting on 20th October. What are these batches? Team Phoenix, SSE, CGL, and CHSL 2021 exams starting on October 20th. And what are the features of these batches? Covers full syllabus for SSE, CGL 2021 exams. The classes will be taught in Hindi and the notes will be provided in English. Total 400 plus hours consumed. Duration of the batch is nine months. Unlimited access to tests, weekly quiz and uh, mock tests, dedicated doubt clearing sessions. And uh, what are the other courses? Let us go to, let us have a look at the other courses. SSE, CGL and CHSL 2021 exams, again starting on 20th October. Foundation batch SSE, CPO 2021 exam. Set to Brahmastra batch for all government exams, banks as well as SSC. Complete batch on general studies, all SSE 2021 exams. SSC selection phase nine and CGL foundation batch, all subjects 20th October. This doesn't go with you people. And if you take subscription for one year, you get additional four months. And if you take two years subscription, you get eight months additional. Every Sunday, there's a combat test. All that you have to do, answer 40 questions in 50 minutes. You can win scholarship from a pool of one crore. Based on your rank, you get the scholarship. And use my referral code Murthy10. Every Sunday, the time is 12 noon. These are the offers. Please go through the offers and use my referral code Murthy10. Then you get 10% discount immediately. All set. Let's crack it. Now we'll go to our actual session. Today I have brought something like a mini mock, a mock test. And uh, many of these questions are from the previous year's papers. And these go with MTS and also GD. So have a look at the first. Uh, I have brought about 45 questions. Good evening, good evening to all of you. And uh, do try to respond quickly because I have brought uh, 45 questions. We should try to complete all the 45. Have a look at the first one and try to answer. Flowers that are just picked begins to rot in 15 seconds. So where is the error? I see one student has already answered. Who is that Vivek? Uh, I want others also to respond. Begin here. What is the subject? Oh, I'm sorry. What is the subject of the sentence? Flowers. Flowers, plural form. We cannot use. Some of these questions are useful. Gangadhar, uh, it's your, I'm glad you are there. I'm going to start one or two days a separate uh, uh, something like uh, for SBI PO. I'm going to start. Please wait for one or two days. Exclusive banks, SBI PO and IBPS PO. Every day I'm going to spend 45 minutes to an hour and uh, do wait for one or two days and uh, try to follow. You will be able to, you will get information one or two days. Right. I know you have been waiting for quite some time, more than two months, I suppose. What is the subject of this sentence, flowers? That is a plural form. And here, are just picked. It is in passive voice and present tense. And the subject is third person plural, then we cannot add S or ES to the verb. Begins is not correct. It should be begin, begin. Flowers that are just picked begin to rot in 15 seconds. That is a shelf life. When something gets spoiled, usually this expression goes with food items. We say shelf life. Have you heard of this expression? Shelf life. It goes with uh, food products, flowers, shelf life. How long it exists? Maybe a few hours. Uh, okay, that's wonderful. That's really good. Let us go to, and what is this question about? This question is about uh, subject verb agreement. You should always make a note what the question, what it is about. That helps in the long run. Please go to question number two. You haven't responded to my invitation, didn't you? This is also an easy one and try to respond quickly. What is this rotten apple? 
Tirupati Rao. You haven't responded to my invitation, didn't you? Perishable goods, exactly, Madhav, you're right. Goes with perishable goods, food items, flowers, export products also. So here, you haven't responded to my invitation. Any question tag? What is this question about? It is about uh, question tag. Any question related to question tags, in my opinion, very easy. All that you have to do, first you have to look at the helping verb. What is the helping verb over here? Have. Then we cannot use did. It is not correct. And one more thing, the sentence is in negative form. Then in the question tag, you should not use the word not. That is also not correct. So here we have to repeat the helping verb and the subject. Have you? I think you guys got it right. Have you? C is not correct. There's an error. And what is this about uh, question tag? And which tense is this? This is uh, present perfect. Present perfect tense. Always make a note. Uh, now, because of the time factor, I'm not going beyond the question. But usually what I tell students, first you try to get the answer. That should be the priority. And once you get the answer, then you ask yourself, what is this question about? Make a note, present perfect tense, and also question tag. Then read the sentence carefully. See if there's something else to learn, a new word, a new phrase, a new expression. That will definitely help in the long run. Don't simply focus on the answers. Look beyond. Please go to question number three. Huh, good evening, Subramanyam. A little late, no problem. According to some estimates, there are 7,000 type of plants. So where is the error? Will you say 7,000 type of plants or will you say 7,000 types of plants? Here we have to use types of plants. It is not type. Type is not correct. That means there is an error in C. Types of plants. And this question is based on quite often in competitive exams, they ask questions related to word forms. Word, the right word, but not the right form. We cannot say type. We have to say types of plants. What is the reason? It should be in the plural form, not in the singular form. What type of material is this? That is correct. What are the different types of plants you have? When you go to a nursery, you ask a question, what are the different types of plants you have? So we have to say types of plants. Please go to question number four. This is an important question. Whenever you see conjunctions like neither nor, either or, or, then you got to be alert and you have to think of uh, three rules, not one, three rules are there. So what are the three rules over here? Neither the principal nor the students. Imagine, you all know we use conjunctions to join uh, words or phrases or clauses. And uh, here we have two subjects. One is the principal and the other one students. Two subjects. We have used neither nor to join two subjects. Here one is in the single, one is singular noun. And the other one is, uh, one is in, one is plural noun. Then what is the rule? We should use the verb in the plural form and also we have to place a plural verb near the plural noun so based on that takes is not correct it should be take there is an error in the second part neither the principal nor the students take interest not takes nothing wrong with a neither the principal nor the students nothing wrong principal first subject singular Student, second subject, plural. Here, the focus should be on the verb. Because the uh, one noun is in the plural form, we have to use a plural verb. And we have to place a plural verb near the plural noun. That is very important. You cannot bring the plural noun. You cannot start the sentence with a plural noun. Here, some students ask me, sir, can we say, neither the students nor the principal. That is not the correct order. First, we have to use a singular noun, then the plural noun. And we have to use a plural verb, as simple as that. I hope you guys are listening carefully. I said there are three rules. What are the three rules? Imagine the nouns are singular. Here, we have used a combination singular noun plus plural noun. One combination, then plural verb. Imagine singular noun plus singular noun. Then we have to use singular verb. 
and the third rule this is rule number one rule number two and rule number three goes with uh, pronouns if you have to use pronouns to pronounce with these conjunctions then you have to remember the verb agrees with the verb agrees with the nearest pronoun nearest pronoun either he or i is going to come they have given in so many exams which is not correct either he or i am going to come verb agrees with the nearest pronoun so all the three rules are important do remember this is what i say look beyond please listen very carefully here many students what they do they look at the sentence they read the question they try to spot the error then they go to the next question don't do that read the sentence spot the error then you ask a question from this what else can i learn what can i recollect what can i consolidate if you ask that way you think that way then you think of three rules and you recollect all the three rules rule number one rule number two rule number three that helps in what i call consolidation when you try this way all the rules will be at your fingertips in the exam within no time you will be able to answer thank you very much please go to rule number uh, question number five two hours have passed since he had fallen asleep now whenever you come across uh, two prepositions since for you have to think of two tenses one is uh, present perfect the other one present perfect uh, present perfect continuous based on the context you have to decide whether it is present perfect or present perfect continuous here since and whenever you use since the after since you have to use since takes past time and past time can be a word adverb of time or a phrase that goes into the past or a clause that goes into the past everything should be past but here he had fallen asleep this is past perfect not correct it should be since he fell asleep this is past tense it should be in past tense he fell asleep so where is the error there is an error in the third part and since i said we have to use either present perfect or present perfect continuous here we cannot use present perfect continuous we have to use present perfect based on that two hours have passed nothing wrong with that and which tense is this present perfect tense perfect i hope you guys got it two hours have passed since he fell asleep fall fell fallen fell asleep is past tense when i ask a question have you got it if you respond i'll be very happy go to question number six he entered into his new house last sunday this question is based on what we call prepositional combination well, thanks a lot for responding subramanyam i appreciate that here enter usually we say walk into nothing wrong walk through nothing wrong but uh, enter sometimes it takes into sometimes it doesn't take based on the context here it does not take into so where is the error b is not correct here it should not be no no i use only english not hindi please try to understand here he entered his new house last sunday into should not be there sometimes students ask sir is it a rule that we have to remember yes it is an important rule many question many exams they have given questions based on this wrong prepositional combination because we all know walk into that is correct based on that some people think entered into that is not correct and uh, sometimes this verb takes into they entered they entered into an agreement 
Answer my question, is the sentence right or wrong? They entered into an agreement. Is it right or wrong? Yes, into an agreement, into a discussion, into a contract, nothing wrong with that. So don't think all the time we cannot use the preposition into after enter. We can use based on the context that you have to remember. I always tell students English, we have rules, we have exceptions. Please go to question number seven. Yes, very good. I appreciate your response. 10 kilometers is a long distance to walk. Anything wrong with this sentence? Sometimes you find certain sentences very strange. Strange, we also use the word weird. English is like that. Every question, perhaps we come across these idiosyncrasies. So here, if you use a logic, 10 kilometers, kilometers plural, and if you use a logic, you think it should be in plural form. But when it comes to distance, weight, measures, English people, though the noun is in the plural form, they considered the noun singular. Based on that, it is a singular verb. Nothing wrong with this. Very good. I think all of you have got it right. 10 kilometers is a long distance to walk. Nothing wrong. Imagine you're not aware of the rule. Then if you use a logic, you think it should be R. Do remember English, quite often I tell students, does not depend on logic. Don't use logic all the time, especially when it comes to English. This is an easy one. You have got many a time, so it should not be a problem. Question number eight, what is wrong with this? When we come across uh, no sooner, hardly, scarcely, barely. One, you have to think of the combination. No sooner than, uh, who is this? Good evening, a little late. Thus, no problem. Better late than never. Hardly, scarcely, barely they take when. First, you have to check the combination. No sooner the minister had heard about the accident than he rushed to the spot. So here, then, no sooner, no problem. But one more dimension you have to remember, that is inversion. The clause should be, oh, yes, the clause should be in interrogative form. Interrogative form. Here, it is not an interrogative. The minister had heard about the accident. That is affirmative. That is not correct. There is an error in the second part. What is the correct expression? No sooner had the minister heard, had the minister heard. No sooner had the minister heard. So then it is correct. Two things you have to remember. One is a combination. The other one, inversion. Or the sentence should be in interrogative, not in affirmative. Please go to question number nine. Ayush, I don't remember Ayush. Came in my video. What does it mean? Do you attend the sessions regularly? My nephew began working for me about 10 years ago. Whenever you see the time phrase that goes into the past and no preposition since or for, then tell yourself it should be in past tense. Based on that, B, there's an error. What is the past form of uh, the verb begin, began, and begun? Here we cannot use begun. It goes with perfect tenses. We have to use began, B-E-G-A-N, began. I think not clear. Begin, began, begun. So answer is here it is not uh, it should be began working for me. So what is this question about? It is about uh, past tense, simple past tense, as simple as that. Let us go to question number 10, the last one related to error location. Prohibition aims at reducing traffic accidents, many of which is caused by drunkenness. 
many of which is caused by drunkenness. Is that right or wrong? Prohibition aims at reducing traffic accidents, many of which then we cannot say is, it should be are, many of which are caused by drunkenness. So what is this question about subject verb agreement? No, 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 no. Malik, it should be are caused, not is. We cannot use a singular verb. We have to use a plural verb. What is the reason? It talks about accidents. This is an important word, accidents, many of which, many also, many is plural. Many students are interested. Many students are listening attentively. Many of which are caused. Are is correct. Is cannot be used. And what is the question about subject verb agreement? Now, these are not easy. Let me caution. First, I will give the instructions. You see a sentence with a blank, then you have four words. You have to select the right word and try to use uh, your vocabulary knowledge, grammar knowledge, as well as contextual awareness. All the three are very important. This is not easy. Still, give it a try. You may have to spend a few minutes. You cannot get it just like that. Have you answered? Malik says uh, D. I'm sorry, it is not correct. And uh, admonish means what? A reprimand. A reprimand also means a scold. Admonish, a reprimand, scold, and what are the other words? C H I D E. All these are synonyms. Not correct. Rude. Understand the context. My tennis player is a. Answer my question. Can admonish. It's a verb, a. Uh, can you use after the indefinite article a verb? No. Can you use a rude adjective? But here, a uh, rude, then you need a noun, a rude person. Otherwise, is rude. That would have been correct. Is loyal would have been correct. But is a uh, loyal, you need a noun. So this is not correct. This is also adjective. Not correct. So prude. Here it is a noun. We need to use a noun. So what is the meaning of the word prude? This is not an easy question. What is the reason? Prude means, see, understand the context. My tennis player is a prude. She will not play mixed doubles in shorts or a tennis skirt. She is overly concerned about being proper or modest. Prude means a person who is very particular or concerned about uh, sexual aspects or uh, sexual aspects or uh, physical appearance related to uh, body parts. So it goes with the context. No problem. No need to say sorry. So a rude, he is a rude person. Rude is not a noun. Rude person. Answer my question. He is a rude person who is a tripathero. He is a rude person. Person is a noun. So what is the word rude? It is not a noun. It is an adjective. Hope you are listening carefully. We need a noun. Only one noun is here. Admonish, it's a regular verb. Admonish, admonished, admonished. A rude person, loyal person. These are nouns, uh, these are adjectives. Only one noun is there. Fine, very good. Go to the next one, question number 12. Sometimes it is good to, your soul in front of your friends. Awareness related to parts of speech, very important. If you can identify the word, the part of speech, that helps in the long run. You can answer many questions. Sometimes it is good to your soul in front of your friends.
this is not an easy one no this is also difficult when i put a star mark it means the question is difficult who is this vivek has got it right answer i think after that i see uh, vivek madhav also got it right and pulkit singh uh, sumit kumar wonderful private working aspirant and anisha that's really good highly appreciable not easy but uh, bear your soul this is an idiomatic expression bear your soul means what share the secrets share the secrets you have a few secrets and you share in front of your friends or with your friends then bear your soul don't separate the words this is one unit and what is this idiomatic expression bear your soul means what to share the secrets not an easy one so don't feel bad if you don't get it you haven't got it right if you are worried about the problem you should do something this is an easy one should not be a problem this is about uh, preposition or prepositional combination who is this okay if you are worried about the problem you should do something do something about uh, it's a standard expression do something about do something about it or the problem there is a standard expression do something about it conversational english we say do something about it do something about the problem so what is it here about question is about prepositional combination let us go to question number 14 this is entirely again there is a time lag this is entirely you and me we have to pronounce you second person singular and me first person singular yes very good vivek is a first one to respond when we talk about two persons or two things we have to use a preposition between based on that from is not correct among is not correct amidst is not correct amidst means in the middle of middle of and among goes with uh, more than two more than two and between goes with uh, when you talk about two persons or two things we have to use easy one yes beyond any doubt between the mother parted her married daughter in sorrow this is also based on preposition or rather a prepositional combination what is the correct combination question number 15 oh i see have you there's a time lag more than 20 seconds i suppose yes now i see question number 15 what is the answer the mother parted for her married daughter not correct parted off not correct parted away her no parted away her that is not grammatically correct parted from answer is not c no 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 answer is d parted from parted you can also use parted away but here you cannot use what is the reason from her married daughter you cannot say parted away her married daughter that is not correct yes answer is parted from her married daughter in sorrow how did she part from her daughter in sorrow it talks about the context question number 16 this movie is directed by steven spielberg yes so this movie is directed sixteen c 
this movie third person singular so we have to use we cannot use a noun in the question tag we have to use a pronoun if you change this to a pronoun it is it and what is a helping verb is sentence is in interrogative not in negative then we cannot use has not correct isn't he not correct the subject is movie based on that answer is c no 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 this movie is directed by steven spielberg subject is this movie so third person singular it looks like we have a problem just ignore don't respond focus on the questions this movie is directed by Sp steven spielberg isn't it that is answer please go to question number 17 i think we have got this already can be no excuses this time students we have done this already 17 can be no excuses this time frenzy <laughs> crazy rather 17 d huh there can be no excuses this time students they are not correct they not correct they're not correct so it is a uh, here there what are these adverbs adverbs of place question is about an adverb question number 18 rather easy it is based on prepositional prepositional combination I don't know. Sometimes we come across. When I started that time, we had uh, real uh, two, three guys would come and try to disturb. Now the number has come down and not regular. Once in a blue moon, someone appears from nowhere and tries to disturb. Just ignore, just ignore. Please focus on questions. Tables are usually made. From is not correct. No, no. Made off is correct. Made off. Who is this? Tirupatrao has got it right, I suppose. Made off. Yes. It is made of what? Usually in conversation English, we ask a question. What is it made of? Have you heard of this question? What is it made of? It is made of wood. It is made of plastic. So what is it made of? Yes. Question number 19. All of them are surprised. This is also based on, oh no, prepositional combination. All of them are surprised. Yes, surprise takes a preposition at, not with, not upon not on surprised at something yes surprised at her rudeness rudeness is a noun form of rude now listen very carefully when wilbur wright tried to sell his flying machine to the u.s government the officials in charge were you have to choose one of the options these are very useful uh new questions and uh, quite challenging no no he is trying to disturb just ignore <laughs> please ignore don't consider no i cannot do that it is not in my hands my only request to those guys and who is this uh, rakesh rakesh please uh, understand here there are so many students whose time is precious. For these students, every second is important and they're working day and night around the clock to achieve success. They're competing at the national level with so many thousands of candidates. So don't disturb. I think they are blocked. Thank God. Now go to question number 20. 20A. When Wilbur Wright tried to sell his flying machine to the US government, the officials in charge were highly misunderstood. No, does not go with the context. The officials in charge were grudging skeptical. Grudge, 
a negative act, a negative thought towards someone, skeptical, doubtful, grudgingly unhappy. Why should we use the word grudging? It does not go with the context. Highly skeptical. Answer is a D. Have you chosen? Oh, Vivek has blocked. Okay, that's wonderful. Uh, highly skeptical. Skeptic means what? Doubtful. Skeptic. You doubt someone. Please go to question number 21. Course. What is the meaning of this? You have to select one of the words. That's very good. Go to question number 21. Uh, what is the meaning of the word course? Usually it goes with cloth. It also goes with uh, material. So what does it mean? Yes, answer is a rough. Path is not correct. Difficult is not correct. Definite is not correct. So course means what? Rough and usually the combination course cloth, course material. Please go to question number 22. Vanish. What is the meaning of the word vanish? Something has vanished. If an animal or plant vanishes from the planet Earth, we use the word extinct. It is, huh, yes, answer, Subramanium has got it right. It is not decrease, it is not encircle, it is not reveal. Disappear, vanish means what? Disappear. And reveal means a disclose. It does not go with the context. Answer is the first option. Vanishing cream. <laughs> Now, spurious, an important word, and it goes with uh, liquor, spurious liquor, means what? Modest, not correct, spontaneous, not correct, fake. Answer is the third option. Spurious means fake, and usually it goes with the liquor. When we, when we say spurious liquor, you have to also learn one particular word. It is... Uh, Adulterated. Adulterate means what? To make something impure. To make something impure. Now here, you have to choose opposite. Please listen to me. Opposite. Yes, of course. This is a mock test from the previous year's question, uh, papers. Aman, yes, of course. Please go to, here you have to choose opposite word. Not the same meaning, opposite. Sandeep has got it right. Malice means uh, it is a negative word to spoil someone's reputation or adulterated. That's why I gave the meaning fake, not exactly. Usually the word fake goes with uh, currency. For that, we also use the word counterfeit currency. But spurious liquor, uh, adulterated, fake means adulterated, not original. Adulterated means what? I hope you're listening, uh, Pulkit Singh. Adulterated means to make something impure. Impure. Obviously, that is not uh, real. That is not the original. So goodwill is the answer. Ecstasy, happiness, both synonyms. Honor, not correct. Goodwill. Answer is D. Very good. And genial. Genial means what? Friendly. And affable also friendly. These two are synonyms, but here you have to find the antonym. Friendly, cordial, then what is opposite? Opposite you have to. No, friendly we cannot say opposite stupid. We cannot say intelligent. Friendly, hostile. Hostile means what? Enmity. We also use the word antagonistic. Hostile, enmity, antagonistic. Friendly opposite. So answer is the third option. Eminent. Eminent means outstanding. It goes with scientists. We also use the word renowned. Renowned scientist. Eminent scientist. So everyone knows popular, famous. Same meaning. Renowned. So not correct. Special. Same meaning. Ignorant. No. Here ordinary is the answer. Answer is uh, B. No, no, nothing to do with genius. That's why they have given. 
Now look at these. He made a few statements, but all were wide off the mark. These are idiomatic expressions. You have to find the correct meaning. 27 to 29, they go with idioms and phrasal verbs. What is the meaning of wide off the mark? Off the mark, off the track, meaning irrelevant, not crucial, crucial, important synonyms. Reasonable, no, answer is irrelevant. The prices are going up by leaps and bounds. This is also idiomatic expression, an important one. Generally, it goes with uh, cities. The city is growing by leaps and bounds. So what is the meaning of that 28? Rapidly is not correct. Gradually, rapidly. Ah, yes, rapidly. Irregularly, not correct. Systematically, not correct. Answer is leaps and bounds means very fast. Then we can use the word rapidly. Yes, yes, that is right. And here there's one more idiomatic expression you have to recollect. Lopsided. Lopsided means uneven. As I said, this goes with the city. The city is going by growing by leaps and bounds, but the growth is lopsided, means what? Uneven. This is a phrasal verb given. I did not give in to his request. Approve, like, yield. We also use the word surrender. Here, yield has a negative connotation. Surrender, yes. Question number 30. He proved himself unique. For, here, for is used as a conjunction, which means because. He refused to go with the tide. What is the idiom? Go with the tide. What is the meaning of that? Give up means to stop doing something. Give up means quit. Give up is different. Quit. Here, give in. Give in means yield or surrender. Go with the tide means what? Go in the tide, go against the tide, go by the tide, no improvement. What is the answer? You have to see if there is any error. He proved himself unique because he refused to go with the tide. I think uh, who has answered? No, no, answer is uh, D, no improvement. Go with the tide. He refused to go with the tide. It's a standard expression. No, no, understand the context. He proved himself unique because he refused to go with the tide. He refused to go against the tide, then he cannot be unique. Hope you guys are listening carefully. Understand the context. Context, he proved himself unique. Why? He refused to go with the tide. He didn't want to be one among many. He wanted to be different. He wanted to be unique. And the clue here, refused to go with the tide. That means to go against the tide. Answer is a D, no improvement. The building you are talking about is not existing. Is this right or wrong? Yes, the building you are talking about have not been existing, not correct, does not exist, and has not been existing, not correct. Answer is does not exist. That's right. Does not exist. We have to use present tense. Yes. 32, his lecture was banned because of the band. Can you use the word banned over here? His lecture was what? Banned or called off, disturbed, interrupted. Called off. Called off means what? Cancel. Called off is the answer, 32. His lecture was banned, cancelled, or called off. Why? Because of the band. Band, you cannot have the lecture. Not interrupted. No, Aman. 
interrupted is not correct what is the reason band you cannot have the lecture you have to cancel the lecture question number 33 some people garner new experiences after retirement is this the right word or wrong word you have to decide some people garner garner means uh, gather usually it goes with courage is it uh, new experiences or new episodes and new events new happenings so what is the answer 33 i think you guys are with uh, the previous one no one has responded 33 no improvement is the answer here new experiences after retirement we cannot use episodes we cannot use events we cannot use happenings answer is no improvement the deaf man that is a clue for you a person who cannot hear asked me to speak up speak up is a phrasal verb so tell me what is the meaning of uh, is it right or wrong 34 speaking is not correct 34 no 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 speak into not correct speak down not correct no improvement what is the reason speak up means to speak loudly to speak loudly no error the deaf man obviously the deaf man says please speak up please speak loudly nothing wrong with the phrasal verb answer is no improvement yes one who eats too much what is the word for a person who eats too much obese overweight yes it is not uh, these two are related greedy means what excess desire this is also not the answer answer is uh, we call that person glutton one who eats too much glutton very good answer is a something exists only in the mind existing only in the mind so what is the right word imaginary fallacy means something wrong gamble missionary i want you guys to respond then we'll see yes answer is imaginary fallacy not correct gamble not correct missionary zeal generally takes the word zeal missionary zeal try to do something on a large scale try to convince people or persuade people and gamble goes with uh, gambling playing cards all those things fallacy means something wrong wrong thinking so answer is uh, imaginary likely to arouse envy envy means what jealous and there's one idiomatic expression green eyed monster likely to arouse envy something that is likely to arouse envy or jealous then envious no enviable answer is uh, enviable not economical not jealous enviable is a right word 38 a 37 i'm sorry 37 it is not envious enviable we don't say envious product we say enviable position i'll give the combination then you understand enviable position or enviable status when we say enviable status what does it mean a status that is likely to arouse jealous envy hope you guys got it please say yes or no that's why i gave the combination i've just given the combination he is in an enviable position he has an enviable status means what likely to arouse envy 
I hope you guys got it. One who loves and supports his or her country and is willing to defend it, 38, patriot. Martyr, a person who dies, dies for the country. Alien, extraterrestrial. One meaning, another meaning, foreigner. And what is the meaning of atheist? Uh, does not believe, doesn't believe in God. Theist, a person who believes in God. Atheist, a, does, a person who does not believe in God. So what is the answer here? Patriot. The study of birds, zoology, study of animals, physiology, study of uh, body systems, and the poetry, study of mankind past to present, ornithology is the answer, yes. Salim Ali is considered father of Indian ornithology and he has established a society, Bombay Natural History Society and the logo of that society, a bird. What is that bird? Hornbill. And you come across this bird, Hornbill, in Kerala state, a Silent Valley. There you come across. Salim Ali is a founder of Bombay Natural History Society and also considered the father of Indian ornithology. Here you have uh, five words, spelling, only one word spelling is correct. Which one is that? Vagabond. Vagabond means a person who roams from one place to another place without any purpose. Answer is a fourth option, Vagabond. V-A-G-A-B-O-N-D, that's right, very good. And the mannered, good mannered, bad mannered, what is answer, 41. I am from Hyderabad, based in Hyderabad. 41, what is the answer? You guys are with question number 40. Mannered, M-A-N-N-E-R-E-D. No, vagabond, it is not uh, V-E-V-A, vagabond, yes, mannered. Territory, territory, this is not correct, this is not correct, this is not correct. Answer is A. A rambler, yes, you can use that word. 42, what is the answer? 42, it is a territory, A is the answer not B. You cannot use double R. It is single R, territory. And precaution. What is the correct spelling of precaution? 43D, yes, easy word. Determination. Determination, no. And mean determination. I think we have Both same spellings. This is wrong. 44, either C or uh, both same spellings. Determination is a right, correct spelling. Sensation. What is the spelling of sensation? Correct spelling. 45, D, yes. Huh, B or C, that is by mistake. Determination, you have the same spelling. And the last one, 45, is uh, sensation. S-E-N-S-A-T-I-O-N, sensational news. Today, people talk about sensational news. So that's all for today. These are actual questions from previous year's papers, useful for MTS and uh, GD, all these exams. I don't know how many of you are trying for those exams. Do remember. 45, imagine you have got 40 plus, that is outstanding. And 38 plus is also good, pretty good. Thanks for being with me till what time is it? Uh, 8.24. Good night to all of you. I will see you guys tomorrow. From now on, I'm going to get uh, uh, mock test model papers. 40 plus questions I'm going to get.